Um, I'm not an honor of time though. My name is Sherry Schneider. I'm a social worker. And for the last 35 years, what I do all day, every day, is get people all the benefits they're entitled to with the secondary goal of keeping as much money in the family as we can. I karaoke three times a year in a dive bar in Springfield with the people that write the manuals, the POMS, which is the Procedure Operating Manual, and the Medicaid Manual. Today, we're talking about all the different social security programs, but I will touch a little bit on Medicare and Medicaid. So the reason it's hard to do that is because Medicaid is state administered and not everybody's from the same state. And unless you all want to move to Illinois, which I highly would not recommend, um, then it's hard to talk about that. So we're going to start. Um, I, I saw who kind of, excuse me, I need a PowerPoint. Is she not staying? We got it for you. We waited for you. I heard you voice. So oh, I'm very loud. They make me wear this, but it doesn't do any good. Before I begin, the very first person in the room gets a prize. I don't know how long it's going to let me walk. And the reason he got a prize was two reasons. One, he was the first person here, so he's real assertive about being here. And what I'm going to talk about, you need to be really assertive about. The second reason is I swore nobody would ever fall asleep in one of my speeches. So my prizes during my speech are instant lotto tickets. So if you know the answer, raise your hand. If you don't know the answer, you learn knowledge. So either way you want, and it's a beautiful thing. So as we go, we're going to be giving tickets as we go. So I'm a social worker, but much more importantly, I'm a mom. That's my son, Zach. Zach was due in February, and my water broke in December, and my husband was really excited. Let's go breathe, have a baby, and come home. No more Lamas. He could go to Friday night football. He was really excited. The problem was his back when I gave birth, it was a huge issue to be 10 weeks early. So when my son came out, the first thing they said was, this, this baby's going to be dead. Unless we give him experimental medication that was not FDA approved. And they gave it to him three times. And he was born with two collapsed lungs. I guess the last thing on a boy to develop is their lungs. So he was born, it got a, the medication got a quarter of one lung open. So today he's breathing with a quarter of one lung. He has got a lot of issues. The minute it turns 20 degree changes in weather, rain or snow, he's on a machine. And living in Illinois, one, you know, to, even today is a perfect example. It's a hundred and something and soon it's gonna be 50 something. But this is my son today. For a long time, I couldn't have a picture because somebody might recognize him. Um, for a boy who was supposed to die, he did pretty well. He went to um, a university with a one-on-one -on -one who made sure that every two hours around the clock, he got his breathing treatments. So I don't know your children. So I'm going to use my son, Zach, as we talk about the benefits. How many people in this room are here with the hat on of being a professional? Okay, so everybody's parent. Oh, you're professional. Are you a parent also? Well, I'm a parent, but I may be um, I'm a social worker and I'm a navigator in the care backyard in the state of New Jersey. Okay. And I do outreach for uh, benefits from the food bank and mom. Okay, because usually I say child or client, but since there's only one professional, I'm just going to say a parent all the way because that's really more of the hat that I wear. So I'm gonna use my son, Zach, as we go through the different benefits. Please ask questions. Everything I'm teaching you is from the Social Security POMS, their Procedure Operating Manual. So if something doesn't sound right, I can tell you where in the manual this is, okay? So in your PowerPoint, these are the four major government benefit plans available to somebody who's 65 and old or deemed disabled by Social Security. I put them in a house for two reasons. One reason is I'm very visual. I'm a social worker. I learn visually and I teach visually. The second reason is it's very similar to the house I live in. Where I live, we eat in the kitchen. We don't eat in the living room with couch white carpet. So each one of these has its own rules. So when someone calls me up and says, how much can my son earn? I always want to know what room we're in. My goal rooms are for everyone to live in the penthouse and to have Medicaid. 
Those are the best, most covered rooms. And that's our goal. And we're, we might not get there right away, but that's where we would like to be. The top of the house is paid for by FICA. And for our second prize of the morning, bless you, the afternoon, what does FICA stand for? Bless you, yes, in the back. Uh, federal Insurance Close enough. Federal Insurance Contribution Act. Brian, can you be my giver out until you leave? This is Brian Rubin. He is speaking about legal and, what's the name of your speech? Legal and <laughs> legal planning. So he's after me, and it's very important for you guys to, if you're interested in this piece, you'll be more interested in his piece. Vanna with no hair will be giving out my tickets. Okay, so it's Federal Insurance <laughs> Contribution Act. It's not something we voluntarily contribute. When I was 16 working at Dairy Queen, I thought this was a lady stealing my money because every single one of our bosses lied. They said we were going to make this amount of money. Does anybody bring home this amount of money? No! They take out federal taxes, state taxes, and I thought this was a girl stealing my money, but that's Federal Insurance Contribution Act, and it pays for the top of the house. So if my son has never worked to paid into the top of the house right now, paid into FICA, for what we know right this minute, he can't get the top of the house. The top of the house money program is retirement, early retirement, widow's pension, and this is the first time we see disabled. SSDI is Social Security Disability Insurance, insurance paid by FICA. Social Security Administration. Oh, okay, and early retirement, that means you have to actually be drawing Social Security benefits? Um, yes, we used to be able to apply and then do something called suspend, but we can't do that anymore. So everybody's early retirement and retirement age is different depending on what year you were born. So if you want to find out what yours is, I'm going to give you a phone number. It's 800-772-1213. And you can push buttons to get what's called an earnings report. It was that black and green form we used to get in the mail every year, and they stopped doing it because when people got it, they went, oh my God, I'm not going to make any money when I retire. And they were flooded with phone calls. So now you have to request your <laughs> earnings report. So it'll tell you when your full retirement age is and when your early retirement age is. But today we're talking about disability and SSDI, which is Social Security Disability Insurance, is also known as Title II. Now what I'd like you to do, I forgot to say this, is put your bingo cards behind your PowerPoint. We are not playing bingo until after. Never fail somebody else bingo in the middle of my speech. We're not playing yet. Okay, so Title II is also known as SSDI. To get SSDI, we had to have worked and paid into FICA. So it's about this time somebody raises their hand and says, Sherry, how much FICA do we need? Well, I'm going to put us all in the same age group right now. Some of you are real happy about that, and some of you are just not really happy about that. And if I walk across the street, and I thought I saw a 7-Eleven, and they have sugar-free Slurpees, which I'm really excited about. And I go across the street, and I break my arms and legs, I get hit by a car. I'm applying for disability. The first thing they're going to do is open my FICA work record. And for our age... Out of the last 10 years, we need five years of quarters. This year, a quarter is 1260. This is not true for our children. Social Security, when you get approved for Social Security or SSI, they give you a date of onset when you first became disabled. If my, what was my son's date of onset? Birth. If the date of onset is before 24, you only need six quarters or a year and a half of quarters to get enough SSDI on their own work record. So if my son earned $12.60 a quarter, the most quarters you can get in a year is four. So if he made enough for a year and a half, he could get SSDI. Now most people say, my child can't work, they're disabled. There is another way we can get this, but we'll talk about it in about a half an hour. 
The top of the house does not look at assets. So when we retire, they can't say, how much money do you have in the bank? It's none of their business because we paid for this with our FICA. To be deemed disabled by Social Security, they have different rules if you're 17 or younger or 18 and older. So first we're going to talk about 18 and older. Their first definition is unable to do any job eight hours a day, five days a week on a sustained basis. Not can I find a job, not can I get to a job, but can I physically do a job? And for our kids, they mostly look at ripping tickets in half at a movie theater, making beds at a hotel, or answering the phone Domino's Pizza. Is that a competitive job? Um, ripping tickets in half at a movie theater is a competitive job. If it's eight hours a day, five days a week. What they mean is not a sheltered workshop or um, any kind of training program. That's what they mean. So the first way, to, the real fast way to get approved is something if you child or has what's called a compassionate allowance. A compassionate allowance gets approved in 20 days. And when I was researching all the disorders that come with what your children have, I found three compassionate allowances. So if your children have these syndromes, now they made it very clear. Marshall Smith syndrome is different than Marshall syndrome. They made it very clear in the Social Security website. So if your child has one of these three, you're a compassionate allowance and you're going to get approved in 20 days. Now most people I work with are not a compassionate allowance. And I was told by Social Security that 84% of initial claims get denied. And I have never had a denial. So I'm going to teach you the secret. If we're not a compassionate allowance, we have to prove two things. And the reason people get denied is they only prove one. The first thing we have to have is a diagnosis on Social Security's list of impairments. And for your kids, a lot of my clients who have those disorders have an organic mental disorder, which means a brain test can prove we have an issue. Or, a lot of my clients who have issues also have lower IQs. To test an IQ, you can't say my child is developmentally delayed or developmentally disabled or is not quite right. None of that counts. They want either a WAIS test, a Weschler Adult Intelligence Scale test, or if they're nonverbal, Social Security will take a lighter test or a C Tony. A C Tony is nonverbal intelligence. So just saying we have problems with this part of our brain doesn't work. We either need to so far be a compassion allowance or have some of these other issues. But again, going in and saying my, my child has an IQ of 69 or below isn't good enough anymore because people can work with any diagnosis. I have AIDS, I have cancer, I have a low IQ. People can work with those things. So the second thing we have to prove, and this is why people get denied, is we have to prove, why can't I work? And I call those things functional limitations. So I'm going to put my son in the job of ripping tickets at half in a movie theater. And for the first two minutes, boy, my son is doing fabulous. Then he has to go to the bathroom. He doesn't care there's a line. He's going to go to the bathroom. And then what's your first name? And say, Jim, you don't want to see that movie. It's a bad movie. So the first thing we have to prove for functional limitations is concentration, pace, and persistence. My son cannot say attentive for eight hours. So he's talking to Jim about the movie. And now the boss comes over. And the boss isn't nice like me, honey, you need to rip the tickets. The boss is going to yell at my son. My son is either going to cry, run away, flip him off, or say, how about those cubs? So we're looking at appropriate social functioning. Appropriate social functioning. If the only problem my son has is that he's not appropriate socially, they'll say he can make beds at a hotel, there's nobody around. Then they look at activities of daily living, dressing, feeding, toileting, 
wearing weather appropriate, matching clean clothes. So again, we have to have the diagnosis, but much more importantly, we have to prove what I call the functional limitations. Why can't I work? Because they don't care about can you make good decisions? They don't care about anything. They only want to know, can you put a screw in the bag and give it to the next person? Well, here we go. All this medical information and school information cannot be older than six months old. So if it's older than six months, they may ask you to get different information. The information you submit or that they're going to get from your, your, your child's doctor or therapist has to show functional limitations. Why I can't work. Not he's a great kid with a great sense of humor. It has to be consistent. So I know an IEP, it's a problem. IEPs should be compared to a typical child, not the other special kids in their class. So my son's last IEP before we applied said he's a wonderful child. He's a pleasure to have in class. And I'm like, who is this kid? <laughs> this is not my son. I had a parent who told me their child couldn't move either arms or legs. And the IEP says they get around school perfectly. Well, that's not consistent. We had one, they came to us and the child was denied. He had an IQ of 30. His head was strapped to a wheelchair. He's in a self-contained classroom with a one-on-one -on -one wearing diapers. How did he get denied? His IEP says vocational goal, competitive employment. All medical records go down to a team of doctors called DDS. I don't see where that is yet which is the Division of Developmental Services, and the doctors down there who don't meet our children make decisions on what's written. And they said, boy, if the, if the school thinks he can work, so should we, he's denied. So they give, you ask me how do they figure that out? They give the most weight to what a specialist says than a regular doctor, like an internist or general practitioner and a master's level person, a therapist, a teacher, other people, we are other people, and the claimant themselves. There is nothing that other people or the claimant themselves can says that can help the person. It can only hurt them. So I'll give you an example. There's something called a function report. Anybody who is applying for disability has to complete a function report. And one of the biggest questions says, Tell me what you do all day from the minute you wake up to the minute you get to bed. So the mom filled it out for me for her child. She says he gets up, he goes to school, he comes home, he showers, he goes to bed. So I asked her some questions and I rewrote it for her. Mom wakes him up. Mom helps him brush his teeth. Mom picks out his clothes for him. Special bus to and from work. He gets home, he, mom gives him a snack. Mom makes him dinner. Mom helps him shower and shave. Which one is better? Okay, so that's, but the other thing in the function report, this is my favorite one. A lady came to us, she was denied. She had a bad back. It asks what your hobbies are. She wrote mountain climbing. <laughs> now, I'm sure she meant that before she heard her back, but it didn't say it, so she got denied. So very little other people, which is us, or the advocate themselves say can help anybody. It's the other people that they give the most weight to. So, yes. What is the information that you go through with the SSI application, like the neurological test and stuff? Does it move with you? Well, I'm going to talk to you right now about that. So all the, the application goes to DDS, which is the Disability Determination Services. And it gets assigned to an adjudicator. That's a fancy word for person who gets the case. And what they, if you didn't give them medical, they're going to write away to every medical source you put on the application. The problem is, and this is kind of a super secret, aren't you glad you're going to learn some super secrets, is you only want to put the doctors that have to do with your child's disability. If you put down that your child had their appendix out or their tonsils out, and they write away to that doctor, and they don't hear from that doctor, you can be denied. So we only want to put the doctors on this, the application that will 
that will promote or really give records to support disability. So if you don't put them in there, they're going to write away to all those doctors. And a letter from the doctor that says there's absolutely no job Zachary can do is not going to work. Because that's going to go down to these team of doctors, and what are they going to ask for a prize? What are they going to ask? Anybody raise your hand? Somebody? Bueller, Bueller? Somebody? <laughs> Does, what, what are they going to ask? Well, they're going to ask, well, can't he do some simple thing? Why can't he work? Where's the functional pieces as to why he can't work? I don't think I can go that far. <laughs> Thank you. So the biggest thing we have to prove, again, are those functional limitations. Why can't he work? So the first thing the adjudicator looks for is a compassionate allowance. 95% of the claims they get are not compassionate allowances. So then they have to look for both things. The diagnosis, but much more importantly, importantly why can't we work? That's called meeting a listing. There's something called equaling a listing. Equaling a listing says I have a little of this and a little of this and a little of this and a little of this, and each one by itself doesn't make me disabled. But when you make it all into one person, it does. And I'll give you an example. Learning disability, if you're 18 and over, is not disabling according to Social Security. Either is ADHD if you're 18 and over. So if I have a learning disability and I have ADHD and I have all these other issues, each one by itself does not need a listing, but it could equal a listing. Does everyone see the difference? So a case gets reviewed by the DDS doctor. And they may say, oh boy, we found both things. The diagnosis, but much more importantly, why they can't work, and we're medically awarded. If they don't see them, we're denied. And most of the reason people are denied is not because their child isn't disabled. It's because we haven't proven they can't work. Remember, that's all they care about is the working. Or if they're not quite sure, they send our, 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 our children for what's called a consultative exam, known as a CE. There are doctors in every zip code, paid by Social Security, to visit with people. And they spend about 10 or 15 minutes with the applicant. So I did a speech in St. Louis, and this one man raised his hand and said, Sherry, I'm blind. When they sent me for a consultative exam, why did they send me to an ear, nose, and throat doctor? He doesn't know I'm blind. They just, it's whatever doctor's in their zip code. So we really want to avoid these consultative exams because they don't spend a lot of time with our children. So most people who go to a consultative exam is because we didn't give them meat and potato medical records as to why we can't work. If the case is medically awarded, two different things happen. Either it goes right back to the office by your house, or it gets pulled for an audit. It gets pulled for an audit to make sure the DDS made the right decision. I have never seen a case get reversed from an audit, but it adds a lot of time onto the processing time. If you're not a compassionate allowance, Social Security says they take 90 to 120 days to approve or deny your case. If it goes for an audit, it takes longer. Somebody else now is ripping it apart and looking at it. If we get denied and they say, they don't say you're denied because you're not disabled, they couch it really nice. They, on the last page of the letter, it says, we realize you have some issues, but we think there's a job you can do. So when people call me and say, my son was denied, and I'll say, why? And they say, I don't know. I always say, look at the last page. And she reads it, and she's, yeah, it says you've got issues, but there's something you can do. So we can file what's called a reconsideration. You have 60 days from the day you get your notice. Now, they don't know when you get your notice. So they give you a little bit of time, five days usually after the date of the notice, to file a reconsideration. So either you or your representative can complete this form. It's available online. You can submit it online even. You don't even have to fill it out as a piece of paper and a pencil. You can do it online. And when you do that, you have to submit why you think this is wrong. So you can say, my child cannot work. There is absolutely no job he can do working. 
What is not a reconsideration is calling that wonderful 800 number or calling the office by your house to say, I don't like this decision. They have to have it in writing and they have to have it timely. The reconsideration, you, you get to give them more information. So I had this one gal who said, well, I don't want my child labeled as having a low IQ. So I didn't give them the IQ test. She was denied. <laughs> so when she did the reconsideration, you can give them more evidence. So she came to one of my speeches and said, oh, that was the most important thing I didn't do. So she added the IQ test to it, and she got approved. They reversed the decision. When you file for reconsideration, you can either ask for a case review, an informal conference, or a formal conference. But if you're, if you're appealing a medical decision, you have to do a case review. There's other reasons why we file reconsiderations. If the reconsideration says, we're right, your child still can't, there's jobs they can do. You can file for a hearing where you will actually, they will actually, this is the first time they will see your child. It's with a hearing with an ALJ, an administrative law judge. So you, if your child presents really well, that's not a good thing. But if your child presents really poorly, that's a fabulous thing. Because now the judge can talk to him and say, you know, can you work? And my son is going to say, yeah, I want to be a doctor. But if you ask him why, it's because he wants to wear a white coat. So there's other jobs you can get wearing a white coat. So, um, so Social Security calls us a hearing. Again, you have 60 days. Really, they give you five extra from the day you receive it. And you have to do it in writing. This is the form to request for a hearing. You, you, the ALJ, you get a letter that says, OK, we're going to come and see you. Come to us at this date and time. You can tell them why you think they're wrong. Oftentimes, Social Security will have one of their technical experts in the world of work come and tell the judge what job he can do. So we went to one, it's very interesting, and the technical expert in the world of work said to this woman whose fingers were like this, they were like claws because she was one of those emergency room nurses that would do clear, you know, and do the fingers became arthritic. That wonderful technical expert, expert in the middle of work, vocational expert, says there's a job she can do. She can skin pork belts. We don't even know what that is. So it's like the mythical world of work. We had a client denied at the hearing level. He came to us and he said, Mrs. Schneider, I'm a heroin addict. And the judge said, I can, they, I can guard a bank wall. He said, I would love that job. <laughs> so they get all kinds of goofy jobs in this mythical world of work. And again, for our kids, they mostly use ripping tickets in half at a movie theater, answering the phone, Domino's Pizza, making beds at a hotel, some kind of repetitive work. So you go to the hearing. Most people use an attorney at the hearing stage. They just do, because they know how to ask questions and to make you not present well. Okay, there's a second definition of disability for people 18 and over. It's called unable to earn SGA or substantial gainful activity. Social Security pulls a number out of the sky and this year if they say if you can earn 1130 a month gross, you are not disabled no matter what your diagnosis is. So I have a client, their parents came to me, had no legs, no arms, and was on a ventilator, and was denied disability. And I'm like, what job can this man do? Before his accident, he was a painter. And now all his paintings are selling. He is earning over SGA of 1130 a month. He is not disabled. So when people call me up and say, you have to help my son or daughter, my first question I ask is, how old are they? My second one is, do you have a, di a diagnosis? Are you working? And then for a prize, what do I want to know about their work? Who, who said that? Oh, all the way to the back. How much they make. See, you got to raise your hand. It's interactive or we're going to be bored. How much do they earn? If they earn $1,500 a month, can I apply for them? No. Okay. So here's my house. 
So far, we learned a lot about Social Security, but the basement, SSI and Medicaid is paid for by taxpayers. And I don't know, a lot of taxpayers are real excited to give the government more money. So the rules down here are very, very different. For a prize, what does SSI stand for? Yes. Supplemental Security Income. I think that's my first speech. Could you give that to him? If you don't get it back, he took it. Uh, usually I hear Social Security, insurance, it's Supplemental Security Income. Now when we get SSDI, it depends how much FICA we paid in. So if you guys own a company and I flip burgers, who gets more SSDI? You guys do. SSI has nothing to do with work. <coughs> Bless you. The federal government gives everybody in every state $7.33 a month for rent, food, foods, and everything. Most states say, well, come work on this. And they give you another state check. There's a handful of states that say, no, you're just living on the federal check. And you're lucky to get that. I was excited to see someone here from Illinois because Illinois doesn't give us any other money. Mo okay. So who can get SSI? Well, anybody 65 and older, anybody blind in both eyes, which is 20 over 200 corrected in the best eye, and disabled. We know this. Either a compassionate allowance or a diagnosis, but much more importantly, those functional limitations that we talked about. And SSI makes three decisions. Their first decision is, does the medical information they have prove we're not, that, we, that we're disabled? I like to replace that by, have we proven we cannot work? I believe a lot of people with disabilities get denied, but we haven't proven the work piece, those functional limitations. They give us the date of onset. What was my son's date of onset? Birth. They said it was 18. They usually give when you apply. So if you apply, we had a, uh, a client who came in, the parents applied and she got SSI and her onset date was 26 because they applied when she was 26, but she was born with Down syndrome. You can't catch Down syndrome at 26. So we have to be careful with the date of onset. We always want it to be before age 22 or we will lose goodies later. Did you have a question? Yeah. You said that yours was um, premature. So I mean, just the four months of the issue, in order to get certain benefits from the hospital, the social was going to be society. We actually got a check. But when he came home, yeah, yeah and we're going to get there in a minute. Why? And, uh, are you always, OK, if you have a higher functioning child, well, nobody has a baby. Like when I had my baby, I didn't say, boy, I can't wait to get you on benefits. I mean, I'm always plan B. I'm the safety right. net. So if my child can work competitively and get all and support himself and be fabulous, I'm not applying for this stuff. But if I if he can't work, we're gonna apply for it. Because maybe he could work part-time and then get the money part-time. Okay? okay? Uh, well, of course, and we're going to talk about what happens as they change. So be careful with the date of onset. Now, I did not argue mine, even though 18 was wrong, because SSI does not pay backwards. And it was before 22, so I don't care. Then they wanted to know, does he need a payee or can he handle his own money? My son went to college, but he would be the first one to tell you that brown round money is not as good as paper money. Does he need someone help with his money? Absolutely. So I am his payee. We give all my clients payees do's and don'ts. How to set up the account, how to keep track of the money. Because if something is done wrong and a rule is not followed, not only are they going to ask my son for the money back, but they're going to ask me for the money back. I came to work one day, and there was a lady who put her key, who, I was putting my key in the door, and she was sitting in the lobby. And she looked up at me and she says, are you Sherry? I said, yes, she starts crying. She hands me a letter. She, as payee, owes $83,000. Pay it in the next 30 days, please. Because she, as payee, did not follow one of the rules. She says, they took my tax return. 
I said, they're going to continue to take your tax return. So in a little bit, we'll talk about what she didn't do and why that happened. SSI looks at income, assets, and where you live. If you're $1 over income or assets, you cannot get this benefit. So if you're sitting there thinking, my child's under 18, and he, something's issued up with that, why can't we get this? There's something called deeming. If you're under 18, parents' income and assets are deemed to the child. So when my son was in the NICU for three months, he wasn't living with us, so our income and assets didn't count, and he got SSI. The minute he came home, our income and assets count, I own a car, my husband owns a car, two cars deemed to one child, too much assets, okay? Now, 18 is a misnomer. You have to be 18 the first of the month. So my son turned 18 December 11th. How old was he December 1st? 17. We couldn't apply in December, or they're gonna look for my income and assets. What's the first month I could apply for him where they're not going to look at me at all? January. To make it worse, you don't get paid the month you apply. So my son turned 18 in December. We applied in January. When did he get his first check? February. Isn't that wild? Did he get, did, when you do it at 18, did, did he get the check going all the way back from birth? No. SSI does not pay backwards. They don't even pay the month you apply. Okay, so yes? Does a special needs trust take the income and assets away from... No, we're going to talk about that in a minute, and actually the rubrics will talk about that later. Okay. So let's talk about income. If our child is under 22 and a full-time student and transition counts, they're allowed to make $7,180 before they take any away from SSI. But the minute they graduate, where they're not a full-time student or they turn 22, they put the money in equation. And they say the first $85 a month you earn doesn't count. Then for every $2 you earn, they take away one from SSI. So I'm going to ask this man in the white shirt, what's your name? Tom. Tom. Tom, sorry, I'm old, I came here. Okay, so we're going to say that my son is 19, he's in transition, he worked one month and made $185. Does that upset his SSI? No, because he's allowed to earn how much? $7,180. We're going to zip it up. My son is now 27. Scary thought. He made $185. The first 85 dozen county is 100 left. How much SSI are they going to take away from him? $50. Does everyone agree? Because he's yeah. right. And that's what happened to that woman. Her son got a job. She never told him. She never sent in his check stubs. All of a sudden, the Department of Employment's computers talked to Social Security's computers and said this young man has a job. You owe us $83,000. So assets, yes? So the transition program after high school would... That counts as a full-time student, yes. But only up to 22? That's corrupt, yes. In some states, transition goes more than 22, but Social Security is federal, they say 22, okay? Assets, if you're 18 or over, you're allowed one home you live in, you're allowed one car no matter what the value is, not that I would give my son a Porsche, and less than $2,000. And if you're over, you get nothing. Social Security, also, SSI, also looks at where you live. Who pays for your housing and your food? I call this room dancing naked on the table. Who here has an 18-year-old not on SSI yet? What is your name? Yes, what's your name? Kristen. Boy or girl? Okay, so Kristen says... And all meat and potato, medical records, functional limitations, no income, no assets. You go to SSI and they're going to say, where does your son live? Lives with you. Then you don't need the honk of $7.33 a month because that's for housing and food and you give them housing and food. So that's valued at a third. So Kristen, you're now getting $488.67. Are you liking that? Not so much. 
So she heard from the lady <laughs> at the beauty shop, you should be charging him rent. And if the rent on his bedroom is above the super secret number, you're going to get $7.33 a month. If the rent on his bedroom is below a super secret number, you're still going to lose a third. So Krista, what are you going to ask me? What is that super secret number? Well, if I look at Kristen's son in a vacuum, I'm going to get him everything. But she and I are old friends. And sometimes renting can hurt her while it helps her son. For instance, you're now receiving rental income. Do you have to pay taxes on that? I don't know if your neighborhood is zoned for rental property. I claim my son on my taxes. So in doing so, I am telling the IRS that I give him more than 50% of his support. But if he rents from me, I'm telling SSI I give him no support. So I'm telling two different government agencies two different stories, and they're both under the Department of Treasury. So don't always listen to the lady at the beauty shop. <laughs> Can we pass this back to her, please? Thank you. Okay. So far, we've only talked about 18 and older. We haven't talked about 17 and younger. So you can't look at a three-year-old and say, boy, he can't work. <laughs> so when we look at younger children, we can't use work. So there's different diagnoses for 17 and younger than 18 and older. So for instance, we talked about some already. Learning disability works if you're 17 or younger is not on the list for 18 and over. ADHD, yes. I'm a little slow. I just need to go back to this. I have a friend that's doing that. She's charging rents to her daughter right now. And you're saying that's a number. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying she needs to check with her accountant or CPA because it could have negative consequences to her that nobody's explained to her yet. 95% of my clients do not rent because their accountant or CPA said, we don't want you to do that because it hurts you as a parent more. Most people get SSI not for the big money, because it's not huge money. Most people get SSI for the doors it opens. Yeah. If you get SSI, the Division of Rehab Services can help pay for a two or four year state school. If you get SSI, in most states it's tied to Medicaid, which pays for all the programs in your state. So we only need one dollar of SSI for all these other goodies. Okay, okay so she needs to talk to her accountant or CPA. You're welcome. Okay, so thank you. So when we look at children, again, we need a diagnosis on the list for children. A lot of times people call me up and they say, Social Security just cut off my child. And I said, hmm, I bet they turned 18. How did you know that? And I'm like a brain surgeon, you know, but it's not. It's because the, death, the diagnosis didn't work for an adult. So we need to make sure that when they turn 18, we have a different diagnosis. The diagnosis, the definition of disability for under 18, you can read all this, but basically it, it is peer comparisons, P-E-E-R. What can your child not do that everybody else their age can do? Does it take longer to do things? Can they not tie their shoes as fast? Can they not do age-appropriate activities? What are they limited in doing? So it's completely different than work. So a lot of times kids get kid SSI, but when they turn 18, they're no longer disabled. Only someone didn't tell the child you're no longer disabled. It's completely different rules. I have a quick question. What about a child that will qualify as a, when he turns 18? Do I have to go that early certification? Or? What happens is when your child turns 18, you get what I call the ugly letter. And it says, prove that you know we need to do a, a medical review and we need to see if they still qualify. And that's when you get the adult pieces. Yes? Um, the children's SSI, how does that relate to the parents' income when they're under? We already talked about that. Parents' income and assets are deemed to the child. We're going to get a little bit more to it now. There's only three assets that are not deemed to a child. One is the home you live in. One is one car. And the other is all qualified retirement accounts, IRAs, 401ks. So when my son came home from the hospital, he couldn't get SSI because we had two cars. The joke was, if I had $1 billion in an IRA, one car and one home, he could have gotten SSI. Income
come, they put in a big convoluted chart, and it's how many kids do you have, how many are disabled, so I can't go into the income piece, but most people are knocked out because of the asset piece. Okay, so we're going to take a deep breath and figure out what we've learned so far. So, if your family is too far, because you need to come, is there a suggestion on how to... Well, they look at the equity value of the cars. So if one, you owe more on it than you own, then that doesn't really count. If they look at the equity value, I owned my car fully, he owned his car fully, the value of two cars was too much. Most children cannot get SSI until they're 18 because of parental income and assets. Okay? So now we're going to take a deep breath, and I'm going to ask this man in the blue, what is your name? Tom. You ready? My son, no income, no assets, very disabling medical records. Can he get, but he's never worked a paid into FICA. With what we know right this minute, can he get the top of the house? <laughs> Let's take a different answer. With what you know right now, he's never worked a paid into FICA. Can he get the top of the house with what you know right this minute? He cannot because he hasn't worked and paid into FICA. But my son is very disabling medical records, no income, no assets. Can he get SSI and Medicaid? Yes. yes. So, Tom, you have my son in the basement. Where do I want him to be? He can get the bed. I want him to be in the penthouse. So, this is my most favorite slide. Sometimes I do it twice. Isn't that fun? How do we get our kids? From the basement to the bedroom, there's two ways. One way would be if he starts working on his own and paying into FICA. And remember, he only needs six quarters because he's disabled before age 24. Or he's what Social Security calls a DAC, Disabled Adult Child. Three things, and all three things have to happen for him to ride the elevator to the better benefits. Number one. That onset date that SSI has for him has to be before age 22. Got that. He needs a parent that has worked and paid into FICA. He has two parents. He's lucky, but he only needs one. And then that parent either has to be old enough to retire and collect or become disabled themselves and collect or die. So for this example, I am not a fan of dying or becoming disabled. So when I get old enough, I'm going to go to Social Security and say, I'm really old, give me my money. And they're going to give me money. And then say, oh, by the way, I have a son on SSI. Or if I'm really cool, I have a dad. They're going to look at his onset date. And then they're going to say, oh, your child goes from SSI to SSDI, so you get a chunk of money, and he gets a separate chunk of money. Doesn't bother mine. And then in two years, he gets Medicare. Yes. You have to have SSI before they can move into SSDI. No. You're not getting SSI once. Yeah, but you have to have you have to prove your onsets before 22 to be able to ride the elevator. Okay. You know, my kid's been on uh, SSI for two years. My wife has Sharp memory too. They deemed her, you cannot work anymore. She's applying for Social Security. Disability. And, yes. Okay. So once she gets Social Security disability, and she has her meeting about how we're going to pay you, she's going to say, oh, I have a son on SSI. Yes. He rides the elevator, gets more money. Right, because they told us if we retire, it would double. Well, there's a, there's a, in that earnings report I told you about, it says how much you get. There's also something called a family maximum. Mm -hmm. So really, a lot of people can get money on one work record. That's kind of one of the reasons why they're going broke. So does anybody else have a question about riding the elevator? Yes. Um, my question is, if at, you usually try to retire at 70, because then you're fully invested. So you might want to retire earlier. It depends. That's why you need a financial person, because if I retire at 62, they limit how much I can earn. If I, my full retirement age is 65, 
So if I retire at 65, yes, I'm making my son do this later, but then I can still work and make as much as I want. So we're looking at the whole picture, not just one person. So for me, my, I'm not in a hurry to get Medicare because he has health insurance. But if my son only had Medicaid or not very good health insurance, I'd be in a hurry for him to get Medicare. Any other questions? Because I want to move on. Mm -hmm. well, uh, the second condition, the uh, FICO work budget. Did yes. you earlier it's uh, <laughs> the last 10 years? No, that's for if you want to be disabled yourself. When you retire, they look all the way back from your first job at Dairy Queen at 16 to today. So it's very scary. My work record says if I became disabled today, I would get $2,300. But when I retire at 65, I only get $1,700. And that's because disability looks at the last 10 years, and that's when you've made your most money. Um, so I want to know how I can become disabled before I retire so I can get the more money. Yes? Do you do it so once my husband's date, so once he turns 18, you have to do the whole... You would start with SSI. Mm -hmm. But, like, we have to meet those three conditions. No, this is for SSDI. Okay. SSI is separate. Remember, we have separate rooms. Okay, so what stops the elevator? First of all, you never want to say, I'm ready to ride the elevator. I made up the house, and I made up the elevator. So if you're in Illinois, they'd say, oh, you're working with Sherry. But none of the other states are aware of the house I made up. So marriage is a huge issue. In fact, yesterday I met with two of my clients who wanted to get married and they wanted to know how it affect their benefits. If a DAC marries a DAC, they can still ride the elevator. And if they rode the elevator, they can stay there. But if a DAC marries a non-DAC, they cannot ride the elevator. And if they're up here, once they get married, they have to come down. Or if they ever work over SGA, and for a prize, who remembers how much SGA is this year? No. Somebody raise their hand. Ooh, close enough, at 10. 11.30. Okay. So now we're going to talk about some other things about Social Security and SSI. First of all, once you get approved, thank you, Mr. Rubin. Once you get approved for SSI or SSDI, you're not approved forever. They put a super secret number in the computer at Social Security for your child. A 13579. That's in how many years you're going to be redetermined. So I have a client call me up and say, well, why do they think my son is ever going to get better? He was born with this. He's, you know, they're not saying, do you still have the diagnosis? They want to know, can you now work? The other thing is be careful who gets the mail because the continuing disability form my son got, and he opened it up because it was sent to him in the mail, and I was at work, and it says, how are you? Better, the same, or worse? So fabulous, better. <laughs> the doctor says you can work. Yes, no, I didn't ask him. Of course I can work. I'm an adult, though, my mom says. I can work. What happens if Social Security got that phone back? They would not be happy, and you would be in a do they do that, huge do they disability. Do that by phone too? I'm sorry? Do they do that by phone, too? Um, sometimes, but these are, these are these numbers, though. These are hard and fast in the computer. They'll always ask, is he better? Because within 10 days, if you're better, you're supposed to report it. And we're going to get there in a sec. So continuing disability reviews are very tricky. So we always have to make sure we fill out that form. SSI can have some issues. If their accounts added together are over $2,000, SSI is going to want money back. If you get a job and don't report the earnings, they're going to want their money back. If you get an inheritance or unearned money, so birthday money, not little teeny money, but big monies, and you don't report it, we have a client whose parents are divorced, lives with dad, mom took him to Vegas. He played the slot machine. He's on SSI. I don't know how he won, but he won $6,000. And I'm first like, why didn't that happen to me? The second thing is the dad calls me and says, my ex-wife, ex expletive, 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 took my son to the casino. I said, have her call me. 
I said, can you tell them it was you? No, they have it on tape. He did it, and they want his social. So we have a problem because now he's got over $2,000. So that's a problem, too, unless you go with him next time and let him tell you to pull it. All changes have to be reported in 10 days. So if you get a job, if you graduate, if you move and they get returned mail, you can have a problem. SSDI is different. SSDI only looks at earned income, not unearned income. And remember, if we get a job reported in 10 days, and we have before the 10th of the next month to, report, to send in the check stubs. Now we've got some good things we can do. There's something called earnings, or impairment-related work expenses. These are things that are needed for them to work. So I have a client who works at a hospital. Here we go. Susie works at a hospital and she does transport. She earns more than $1,300 a month. So there are some things we can ask. How do you get to work? If, because of your disability, you can't take a regular train or bus route, or you have to take Uber or a cab, those receipts can be minus from her $1,300. We would get a doctor's letter that said, due to her disability, she can't take a fixed route. They will subtract that from her earnings. Uh, cost of medication, all different kinds of things. Cost of a job coach. So for Susie, who makes over $1,300 a month, what questions can we ask her to get her down to SGA of 1130? Anybody know? Yes? Regular, if, what if she takes regular transportation? Can we subtract that? No. So we would, you're completely right. We would ask if she takes special transportation. We'd get a doctor's note saying why she can't take regular transportation and we can conduct those. That's completely correct. Her cost of medication, she's on ADHD medication, and her cost after the insurance is 50 bucks. Can we do that? Can we subtract that every month? Absolutely. Huh? Oh. Oh, you want one? Okay. So, only a true lawyer who used to work for the IRS would say that. Okay, let's talk about a few other things, and then we're going to play bingo. Pass plan. The best way for, does anybody in this room heard of a pass plan before? No. Okay, these are really cool. And I'm going to explain it with an, an example. Jimmy's uncle owns a store in Chicago, but he wants to sell it and move to Florida because he met somebody online and he wants to move to Florida. And Jimmy wants to buy his uncle's store. And his uncle wants $8,000. Jimmy's on SSI. Can he save $8,000? What's the most he can have? Less than two. So what can he do? He can complete a pass plan. This is the Social Security's form number. And he can either mail it or bring it into Social Security. And it's like making a business plan. I want to save $8,000 so I can buy my uncle's store. And then I'm going to become so self-supportive that it's going to be fabulous. And these pass plans go to regional people. There's one man that is from the Midwest region. And he looks at these. And he's the nicest man in the entire world. And he denied Jimmy's pass plan. Because Jimmy didn't say how much his uncle's store was worth. Was it worth 8000 So we had to put in the financials. And then they approved it. Now, Jimmy should not start saving money until his pass plan is approved. Because what if he starts saving that 8000 and he's on SSI? What happens? He loses SSI. So we don't want to start saving money till the pass plan is approved. I want to save money for a computer to buy and sell on eBay is a pass plan. I want to buy a computer just because I want to look at porn sites is not a pass plan. Okay, you kind of see the difference? <laughs> Who said no? Oh, we're in trouble now. Okay, has anybody heard of Ticket to Work? Okay, I'm going to explain it with an, with an example. Susie wants the same job as her friend. Her friend works at Walgreens and takes the old, old dated food and puts it in the front so that we buy things that are going to expire sooner and the, the store doesn't have to throw away their food. Susie's getting SSI. 
She received her ticket to work. It's either hard cardboard or it's email. So ticket to work, you have to be between 18 and 64. You have to be receiving SSDI or SSI. And we are not really expected to be medically getting better. It's not like I hurt my back and I'm a piano mover. So Susie first has to find an employment network in their area. I gave you their phone number, but you're not going to get through. So I gave you the <laughs> www number, www.yourtickettowork.com. And the whole idea is to ask them for a network plan that we'd like. So we found one. And I went with her to the meeting. It was the Division of Rehab Services. And the man fell asleep in our meeting. Not just closed his eyes, snored. So I went out in the hallway and I said, we need someone else. And I thought, what am I, stupid? So I went, we got a different network. And they said, this is the plan we're going to give you. For We are going to come with you with a job coach every day. And then half days. And then three days a week and whatever. And okay, we like that. So for the first two years, ticket to work doesn't care if you work or not. But during the, the second year, you have to be earning three months over SGA, which is 1130. By the fifth year of your plan, you must be earning so much that you, lost, you don't qualify for benefits anymore. My clients get jobs and lose jobs and get jobs and lose jobs. So ticket to work sometimes is not always the best thing for people who have kids like ours. Okay, how to protect SSI or to get SSI. So I, was, we're going to say that my son was in a, he had a medical malpractice when he was born, and he has $750,000 in his name, and he turns 18. Can he get SSI with $750,000 in his name? No. What if my son is on SSI? And my grandma leaves him $30,000. What happens to his SSA? One. The answer is a special needs trust. And there's two different kinds. And Brian, who's been so gracious to be Van White, is actually doing special needs legal and financial planning. That's your title, by the way, at 4 o'clock <laughs> today. And he's going to talk about guardianship and special trusts and when the bus stops coming and... The ABLE account, which I'm, some states have and some don't. So now we're going to play bingo. Does everybody have a bingo card? Okay. Oh, I don't have any more that are already made. So I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yes. Shh. Question. One of the key current rumors that there was legislation passed up to 2001. There has been my whole entire life, and be, I don't think it's going to pass. There's, it's because it's not, new, it's not money neutral. I hear it every year. You'll hear it every year, too. And the other question is, and you rush on at the family limit for Social Security benefits, depends on how much you earn. Are you talking about SSI or SSDI? Well, that's my question. Okay, if you're in the top of the house, it's your own FICA or your parents' FICA. And that's when we ask for our earnings report. At the beginning, I gave you an 800 number to call for your earnings report to see how much you would get. Okay. Yes, in and the back. And not limit the total, but I can get plus or minus. That's correct. There's a family maximum. Yes, it's a family. SSI, oh, you, he's going to move automatically to SSDI once you retire and collect. Oh, okay. SSI says if you're eligible for any other benefit, you have to take it. So when a parent retires and collects, the child has to also move to SSDI. Okay, okay all the way in the back. You guys, shh, I can't hear, I'm really old. No, SSDI and Medicare do not care. SSI and Medicaid does. So the top of the house doesn't care if you marry. If you marry. The bottom of the house cares if you marry. Unless you're a DAC. And if you're up there, but if you're on your own work record, you're not a DAC. So I answered it correctly. Yes? Um, that 22 thing? Yes. Have to have no. 
your onset date. SSI says you become disabled before age 22. So if you be apply before 22, the onset date will be before 22. So, what, so if you apply at 23, can you say the onset date is sooner? You could try. They're not yeah. very good about doing that. They gave that gal with Down syndrome 26. Common sense says she wasn't, she was born with that. They, SSI usually gives you the date you were, uh, that you, that you apply. Yes. So what, just to make sure I understood you correctly, even though our, our children got SSI when they were born, because they won't count that as the back of the onset. That's correct. They will not. That's correct. They will not. Um, I, I understood from our special needs lawyer that it's, it's hard to get them from SSI to SSDI, but it sounds to me like it's not. It's not if the onset date is before age 22 and you have a parent with a FICA work record that retired and collected, God forbid became disabled and collected, or died. Okay, so I am going to start collecting Social Security in January. Uh, because you're old enough? Okay, then you tell them, I have a son on S or daughter on SSI. They're going to check the onset date when SSI was approved. If it's before 22, you have no problem. So what if it's after 22? Then you have to prove it was before then. When you get your letter for SSI that says, congratulations, you got SSI. This is how much you're getting. Your child became disabled at, and it gives you a date. If that's not before 22, you have 60 days to appeal that. So if you apply before 22, you don't have a problem. If you apply after 22, you potentially have a big problem. Yes, we have to we have to be done soon with questions. Go ahead. I have a daughter that's 16 and her husband is 17. Okay, okay, so she's probably on. I have a child. I'm on. I'm on Social Security because my dad is retired. At 16, you get an ugly letter that says prove you're still in school or you have a disability yourself. So then you get the letter, you take it to the school and they say, oh, she's a student. Then at 18, you get the other ugly letter that says prove you have a disability because her survivor benefits, that's what they call them, will end at 19 and three months. You had a question? For parents that have children younger than workable age, like seven, eight, nine years old, what? should we do to prepare for this process? Nothing yet, unless okay. you're indigent, because you can't get SSI because of parents' income and assets. Give them a lot of money and they're already naked. You can, well, actually, special needs job. yeah, well, if you go to Brian's session, he talks a lot more about younger children. Okay. Yes. So I applied for DDS. No. For my daughter. SSDI or SSI? Well, in Washington State, it's DDD. Well, okay, okay, so the medical records go down to DDS. Okay, right. Okay. So, so she gets services, but she was denied because her IQ was, was like 70, and so it wasn't low enough. Okay, let me give you a trick. Not trick. Method. We have a doctor, and people come from all over the country, to have him test their children's IQ. Because a 70 gets you nothing, a 69, all the doors open. And there's a standard deviation. So I'll give you an example. There's a question that says, what do a fork and a spoon have in common? And the girl said, they're friends with the knife. And the school gave her a three. Our doctor gave her a zero because silverware are inanimate objects and cannot have a friend. <laughs> so depending on who does your testing, depends on what number you get. When the schools do them, they have a set amount of money. And if you score low, we give you more services. If your child scores high, they don't have to give you those services. So that's something to think about. Yes? One quick question. My daughter was on SSI from the time she was uh, 18. She's 24 now, and this year, they're moving her to SSDI because she's had jobs. On her own work. Right. Now, now, do they do that automatically? Nothing's automatic, it's the government. So, either you go and you say, we have enough work quarters, let's move her, or you get a letter that says, oh, we just figured it out. We're going to start paying SSDI, but now you owe us all this SSI back. That's exactly what happened. Don't, aren't I smart? 
Because what happened was the SSDI they should have caught sooner. So they overpay to the SSI. That's what it is. That's what it is. So let me teach let me teach you a, let me teach you another secret. Write this down. Cross, I know, isn't that cool? Cross $889.74. You are not writing a check. This is what you're gonna put in writing to them. You want to do cross program recovery. Cross program recovery says withhold 10% of my SSDI until I pay back all of the SSI. Program recovery. 10% of my SSDI till my SSI is paid back. Okay, we are now playing bingo. Everyone take out your cards. Thank you, thank you. Are you so happy you came? Where, okay. do you, where do you live? <laughs> I live and work in Illinois, but some programs are federal. Okay, here we go. Do we want to play super secret bingo? Or will we answer it ourselves and we're quiet? Or do we want to play all open? All open because he may know something you don't. Okay, so the maximum federal amount of SSI in 2013 is how much? 733. So if you have 733 on your card, put an X. If you don't, my son would tell you, too bad, so sad, okay? <laughs> At what age does SSI no longer deem parents income and assets? 18. A diagnosis is never enough to prove disability. We need to prove... Functional limitations. Yay! Functional limitations. Did you guys learn all this? Yes. Do you feel so smart? And how much time do you have to report changes? Amen. You guys all better get this or I'll be really mad at you. To get SSDI, what must you or a family member have paid into? My God. Yay! Who pays for bottom of the house programs? Taxpayers, good. Okay, there's no no, so everybody's going to get this one right. Wasn't this the most fun seminar on Social Security you've ever attended? Okay. Where in the house do we want our family members to ultimately be? In the house. Oh, I have to tell you, all the prizes look like what they are, with the exception of this. This is not a Tampax. This is a lint roller. Okay? Everything else looks like what it is. My daughter's like, Mom, why'd you buy all these tampons? Okay. <laughs> if you earn over 1130 month gross, you have earned over substantial. Oh, good, SGA. The two of you got it right. Substantial gainful activity or SGA. Good. If someone cannot manage their own funds, Social Security will assign them a blank to handle their benefit. Payee. Good. How much in assets can you have for SSI? Less than 2000 How much can a full-time student under 22 earn before it affects their SSI? $7,180. How? Bingo? Come and get a prize. Don't clear your cards. We're going to continue to pay. Oh, fake out, bingo. Never mind. You have one? Come and get a prize. Okay. How much is one credit or quarter for Social Security this year? Good. Woo! Those you guys had cheater cards. Come and get. Do not clear your cards. We're going to continue to play. What fraction? What fraction of SSI do you lose if you live with someone else? One third. What is the professional name for SSDI? Title. Title II, where does all the medical information go for a medical decision to be made at Social Security? DDS, good. What can we subtract from income to reduce the monthly earnings? Erwies, impairment related work expenses. What gets approved in 20 days? Compassionate allowances. If your initial application is denied, you can file a... If your reconsideration gets denied, you can file a... Hearing. 
If you're <laughs> under 18, working is a non-issue. Social Security looks at peer comparisons. If you want to start a business and you need to save assets that will put you over 2000 you can file a pass plan. Okay, shh. If you have not gotten a bingo, come and get a prize. <laughs> I'm going to tell you, we play bingo for two reasons. One is I don't get out much and I think it's really fun. The second reason is I want you to see how much you've learned in an hour and a half and give yourselves a hand. It's very, very important that you go to the Rubin Law session because that will, that will enhance what you've already learned and you will feel very smart and it adds on to my piece. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. You're welcome. You just nailed it. Exactly. So you completed her and you'll be.